So you only have a few days in Singapore, but you want to try as much food as possible and get a great view of the city? Because that's exactly what my friend from out of town wants to do today, and I know just the perfect place. Wow, where are we going? Well, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite buffet restaurants and you're going to eat like you've never eaten before. Can't wait. <laughs> wow, what a beautiful place to chill and relax. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. They have seven different theme nights too. Ooh, yeah. Let's go taste. Oh. You can make your own sorties here. Yeah, perfect for the warm Singapore weather. See what did I tell you? It's a feast! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always come here for the seafood and the laksa. Ooh, and I got my favorite beef and barramundi. Perfect, let's tuck in. I love the herbs, they're so fresh. Do you know that they're actually freshly picked from Rise's own herb garden? Oh! Oh, hey, look, you can even take a stroll outside. That meal was amazing. I feel like I've tasted my way through Singapore cuisine. It's okay, you're more than welcome, but are you sure you haven't got space for dessert? Oh, there's always room for sweets. <laughs> I knew it, come on. Green. Oh, I am so full. I feel like I need to just walk around to digest my food. Ah, uh, well you, my friend, have come to the right place. Let's go for a walk and then I'm going to show you Singapore from the top. Wow, what an amazing view of the city. You got to see this. Oh wow, that's a merlion! Yes, and that's the esplanade there. Looks like a durian, right? This has to be the best place that you can catch the sunset in Singapore. Mm -hmm. What more could we ask for? I will be back. Cheers!
This exhibition, Living with Ink, uh, begins with the collection of Dr. Tan Si Chor, uh, who is one of the biggest collectors of Chinese art in uh, Southeast Asia in the 20th century. So at the museum, we want to use this collection of masterpieces by artists like Xu Bei Hong, Ren Bo Nian, Wu Chang Shuo, and Qi Bai Shi to actually also explore the development of the local art scene in Singapore and how these uh, global art developments actually connect to what was happening in Singapore in this turbulent period of the 20th century. The most classic examples of this kind of adaptation, we call it today the Nanyang style of art, is uh, Chen Chong Sui's Kampong scene where he uses the sort of Chinese ink painting techniques that he was trained in in Shanghai, uh, combines it with the Western perspective of uh, naturalism and realism in art to depict a very uh, local scene, a scene that's very distinctive to this region of uh, Kampong wooden stilt houses framed by two uh, coconut trees and it gives this very peaceful seaside kind of atmosphere and kind of feel. There's a trio of paintings that I want to highlight actually and it reflects the master-student relationship. We see a painting of uh, Wu Chang Shuo, of uh, spring flowers, of peonies and white magnolias. Wu Chang Shuo was actually the teacher of another very well-known Shanghai painter called Wang Ge Yi, who came to Singapore in 1985 to do a public demonstration of his painting at an exhibition of his works at the National Art Gallery of Singapore. And we brought that work out of uh, red flowers, uh, red camellias on display. But Wang Geyi was actually invited here by his student Huang Baofang, who was trained in Shanghai but then settled in Singapore. So we have a painting by uh, Huang Baofang of uh, Wisteria on display, all in the same space. So we see the connection between master and student very well in this trio of paintings. With Living with Ink, the museum explores the impact of Chinese art and culture on Singapore. And through exploring the links between the overseas Chinese community in Singapore and the rest of Southeast Asia with the mainland, that has continually been renewed through art, culture and intellectual exchanges in the 19th and 20th centuries. We want to show how relevant Chinese art and culture still is to Singapore today and how it can help us better understand our history, our own unique identity and our culture as uh, Singaporeans. And we really hope that our visitors to the museum can uh, experience this with us through this exhibition. There are bars, and then there are cool bars by the beach. Singapore is a tropical island, and if you want to make the most out of the trip, be sure to soak up the sun and dip your toes in the sand with an ice cold beer or cocktail in your hand. I'm now at Seaside Siloso Beach Sentosa, where you'll find a collective of bars such as Sandbar, Coast, and breaking the charm and rustic beach afternoon vibe is Bikini Bar, where the legendary quarterly beach party Via Kini Rocks is held. Let's check it out. Heart thumping live music, irresistible drink and food offers, fun beach games led by Bikini Babes. Bikini Bar comes complete with a pool table and an island bar. Bringing some of the best homegrown bands in Singapore, be sure to join in the fun held every quarter. You'll be forgiven for mistaking this as a Bali beach. If you're looking for something a bit more laid back and intimate by the beach, then you can't miss Coasts at Seaside, located right beside Bikini Bar. With Instagram-worthy backdrops, Coasts offers a shaded deck, beach seatings and sunbeds to the water's edge. What I'm having is the slipper lobster spaghetti and banana and chocolate pie, paired with an ice-cold Cronenberg lager. Cheers! After a hearty lunch, what better way to spend your lazy evenings than to rest and relax on one of Sandbar's new and comfortable beanbag lounges? And if you're still hungry, remember to try their roasted meats, mini burgers and tasty desserts. The ultimate beach dining experience is never complete without live music spun by Sandbar's very own DJ. Glorious sunset, spectacular daily fireworks, Sometimes, the best experiences come free. Seaside, the ultimate beachfront experience. Check out the website below for more.
Who can say no to an all-day breakfast, especially when each dish is inspired by breakfast from all over the world? I'm here at Wild Honey, a breakfast place that's always buzzing with activity any time of the day. A wildly popular restaurant, Wild Honey's menu features an incredible choice of breakfast from different countries. Think Tunisian, Norwegian, Canadian, Scandinavian, and many more. It's what I call a global gastronomical adventure. If you fancy something vegetarian, there's a huge range to choose from. Today, I'm having the Flinders Lane. It comes with a crispy base topped with perfect poached eggs, grilled asparagus, sliced avocado, spicy tomato, and sesame seed and nuts for an added texture. Highly recommended for brain food lovers. And I always pair my breakfast with a cup of excellent coffee from the Common Man Coffee Roasters. Awarded the Certificate of Excellence by TripAdvisor in 2019 and voted Best Breakfast in Singapore for many years, Wild Honey has gone from breakfast to breakfast and has opened its third outlet in the sprawling South Beach Avenue. Wild Honey opens from as early as 8am but do check out each outlet's operating hours. You'll find Wild Honey at these three locations. Wild Honey Mandarin Gallery, Wild Honey Scott Square and Wild Honey South Beach. So, what do you feel like doing today? Well, we could... How about... Or... Hey, I think I found just the place. Do you want to check it out? Sure, let's go. 313 at Somerset is super easy to get to. It's right above Somerset MRT in the middle of Orchard. Don't forget to grab a tourist card from the concierge on B1 for some sweet deals before you get started. So this place has all my favorite brands and eight floors. Start with clothes. I need some new dresses. Let's do it. Okay, I have all the clothes I need. My luggage is gonna explode. Mm -hmm, me too, but I also feel like I can squeeze in just a little bit more, right? I think we can, but can we grab a snack first? Let me guess, Garrett? <laughs> okay, time for more shopping. Hey, try the sound on this. Whoa. That is good. Oh my god, that's so cute. That is adorable. Hey, we're on holiday. We deserve some pampering. Massage time? Um, yes. Let's go. That was amazing. And I'm kind of hungry right now. So, can we go eat? Sounds good. Let's go. <laughs> There's so much food at Food Republic. Prata, fried carrot cake, charcuate tiao, chicken rice. I love Ya Kun Kaya Toast. The traditional Singapore breakfast is so good. A thick slab of butter and kaya and an irresistibly favorite kopi. For me, it's all about the grilled fish at Tan Yu. It smells so amazing. Now, I think we can both agree that a German beer goes down pretty well. I'm totally with you on that. I have to show you this place later. Okay. Cheers! Cheers! A bowling club in a shopping mall? Yes. K Bowling Club is an entertainment center with bowling alleys, darts machines, and a bar. You know, in all my travels, I've definitely never been to a place as cool as this. You can shop, play, dine, and even go bowling? That's crazy. You can say that again. Another game? Yeah. In the heart of Kuala Lumpur lies the jewel of Bukit Bintang. This is Pavilion Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia's award-winning premier shopping destination housing eight precincts to fulfill all your personalized indulgences. 
Pavilion KL is a dream destination for shopping, dining and urban leisure. Whether you're a visitor to Malaysia or a local, there's something in store for you. Food, to me, it's a way of uh, expression. It's love and it's creativity, so it gives me kind of space to try new things. So I'm quite excited when I cook. I like to try new recipes, mix recipes together. It's fun like that, and then to watch people's reaction also. So the idea is how do you build that community of people who like to entertain, right? So those are the people that you, you invite into the home. And we bring in various experts in different fields. And one of them, of course, is Claire, who is this phenomenal <laughs> magician that has blown our minds. Scary. And scary and beautiful, you know. Um, there, you just can't put your finger on it. And that's, that's what the experience is about, is come hungry, come curious. You will have a new experience. And it's a wonderful platform also to showcase other talents. It's not just about us, you know. It's not just the food. It's the idea is it's a community experience. A famous freediver once said that scuba divers dive to look around and freedivers dive to look within, and that really spoke to me. I went to Hawaii, the big island of Kona, and I tried um, just diving off of shore. All of a sudden, I could hear the humpbacks offshore. So loudly, they was reverberating in my chest. You couldn't hear them from the surface, and you wouldn't have been able to hear them if you were scuba diving. And so I thought, oh wow, this is really amazing. You get these incredible experiences. I should try this. And so that's where I started. I'm Chris. I would describe myself as being post-corporate. I used to work for a company, and um, now I'm doing things for myself. Freediving can change someone's life, um, and has changed my life. Um, it is a mind-body discipline. It opens up experiences that are not available to everybody. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the world will ever be able to experience the things that you can see and feel while you're freediving. and my heart is still beating really fast right now. It was amazing. When I accidentally hit someone, it really felt like there was a zombie touching me. It feels so big in there. It's intense, it's scary, and it's a workout. It was insane. It was so much fun. It was awesome. I felt like I was in a zombie apocalypse myself. So real. I felt like you were walking upside down. I was so into the game. We just kept shouting. It was out of the ordinary. It was so fun. Not much longer now, Raph. We just Please. need to have a dress No to more glasses. shopping. And all, a jacket. Um, hello? Wanna escape? Where? Somewhere awesome! Hell yeah! Woo! All right! Yeah, Singapore has trampoline parks, but bounce is so much more than that. Woo! All right! Yo, Ruffy, can you do a flip? No, can you show me how? So all you need to do, one, up! 
flipping is just one of the things you can learn at Flight Academy, where one of Bouncer's awesome experts teach you how to do some super cool tricks. Good, Ruffy. Much better now. This one. Play the 10 tricks on the freestyle list and get a free 2 for one voucher. It is as easy as the sit drop. Good. If you want even more of a challenge, check this out. Alright! Hope you're ready to lose to a kid. You gotta get up! Get it up! up! X-Park is like Ninja Warrior, but way cooler. I know I make it look really easy, but seriously, this is not for wusses. some shopping, but can we take a break for just an hour? I know this great place. They do Aussie coffee. It's just around the corner. Well, the first meal I cooked was kind of a disaster. My parents came over uh, for dinner and I decided to roast a duck, which I don't know why I did that. I had no idea what I was doing. I remember uh, Dad very sort of uh, politely saying, um, yes, it takes a certain skill to cook duck. <laughs> You know, my DNA as a chef really is so ingredient directed and often ingredients just speak for themselves. When you live in a big city like Singapore, you often can get detached from ingredients and detached from the source. As a cook, you always have to take time outside of the kitchen, outside of your usual environment. So coming here to the Kalong is always a great source of inspiration because we can really find a lot of different things that are uh, sustainable and local. Uh, that helps us to bring our own cooking to another level back at Stella. Best cooking is really something that's very personal. Uh, it's the personal experience of exploration. It's amazing, even today, we discovered new uh, flavors right here at Kalo. There's so much discovery and there's so much immediate enjoyment, I think, when you see, get the reaction uh, from people uh, to food. It reflects your personality, really. The day of the chef being the one that says, okay, this is 
what you're going to eat, and that's that is gone. So having this connection with where the ingredients come from, I try to bring that into our whole environment in terms of Stella. All the rest of the chefs, I want them to feel equally as passionate about the sourcing, about the producers, because I know that that just always elevates the flavors that we want to produce to another level. As the sun goes down and the lights come on, you want to give people an experience. There was one that actually made someone cry once. That was the first time I've ever experienced that here. I would draw music from Africa and uh, you know, I play stuff from Latin America. I play a bit of hip hop and like, I'll move in and out to kind of fit the, the space here. Yeah. I'm, I'm so lucky to have a view like that. From the time I started work here, this is the one thing that always I always marvel at and I never get tired of, this view. The club sound beyond 10pm is always a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more digestible for uh, the people who come up here. Because you not only have tourists, you have hotel guests, yeah. and you do have people who want to club. I think there's something for everyone. <laughs> good comments from from the crowd everyone's like oh you know it's really cool to hear music from my country and you know like C'est la vie being quite an international uh, destination hi I'm Valentina and I moved here in Singapore three months ago I've heard about this Italian restaurant so let's see if this Italian restaurant can have my food craving the handmade the squid ink uh, takalurini and then you have the fin the clay oysters kaluga queen caviar hokkaido sea urchin and sardinia potaga this is the first time that i have homemade pasta in singapore and it's amazing it really reminds me the pasta that my mom cooked for me so good this meat is so tender and juicy and it's very well cooked I enjoyed my time here having good drinks, listening to a jazz band in this beautiful location. And I can definitely say that this is the best Italian restaurant I've ever tried here in Singapore. But it's one of those things where you, you never actually make the decision to start it. And that was probably the most important part of this whole process was actually just committing to the fact that I was going to spend years. I, I didn't know it was going to be three years, but I knew it was going to be a long time. And I went through periods of confidence and, and, and near depression on this ship. If you look at something for so long and you spend so much time working on it, you lose all confidence that it's going to be of interest to anybody, anybody else. So that's why I guess I was so excited when the film was released and, and people sort of appreciated the work that had gone into it. So it started to feel a bit more worthwhile again. And that it wasn't so much that I wanted to show off or show people the city, the city growing. I think I actually wanted to see it myself. Singapore's got nowhere to, nowhere, nowhere to grow. It's not like a lot of places in the world where cities sprawl and get bigger. In Singapore, things tend to get taken down before they get built up. It has to be creative in how it plans for development. And so for me, that's, that's a story. It's like, it's like the modernization of Singapore and just seeing it almost reinvent itself every, every few years. The way that I wanted to shoot it, I didn't just want to have permanent cameras which would create a, a very common time-lapse effect where you see a cloud that appears and a cloud that disappears. I wanted the whole film to flow organically. So I had to do a lot of planning and started with about 30 core shots. By the end of the film, it grew to about 70 locations around the city. And then it took a lot of, a lot of discipline. And it can be a little bit of a lonely existence when you spend three, three and a half years working on a project. I don't think, for example, even my wife and my daughter really know how much went into this film. But I really do enjoy, enjoy being like an outside observer. Uh, and even though the techniques have changed throughout all of my films, there's still a sense that it's almost like you're in a separate place when you're looking at the, at, at the city. 
Um, so I'm not really getting in people's faces with cameras, I'm more just somebody who's sort of quietly off to the side looking at the world from a, from a distance. Whoever said money can't buy happiness has never been to IMN. Let's go! This is Singapore's largest outlet mall with over 90 outlet stores. And the best thing is they all offer up to 80% discounts on international brands all year round. And to get here is easy. Just take the short walk from Jurong East MRT station via the Jaywalk Link Bridge. Food, glorious food. If you can name it, you can eat it right here at IMM. I think I'll start with some Asian fusion. Just look at this, Bali Thai's famous seafood Pad Thai noodles. Mm. I'm finally ready to hunt for a whole new wardrobe. But where better place to start than a woman's most important accessory, the handbag. Pay attention, gents. Check out Coach for an unparalleled collection of quality and craftsmanship at irresistible discounts. Visit Furla, where you'll find the perfect bag for any occasion. This chic design was especially created for this store. Head over to Kate Spade, New York for something playfully sophisticated. I probably have enough already, but I cannot miss Outlet by Club 21. This outlet features a well-curated collection of both men's and women's apparel. Ooh, I found the perfect dress. Sakor is one of my favorite lifestyle brands that caters for men, women, and kids. And the best part, you can get up to 75% discount any time of the year. From heels to flats and wedges to sneakers, Charles and Keith has the perfect fit for you at discounted prices. A lady can never have too many shoes. Shopping is a very physical activity. Luckily, there's an abundance of athleisure wear at IMM too. At Under Armour, you can kit yourself from head to toe while saving up to 50% off recommended retail prices. If you're a visiting tourist, be sure to pick up the IMM Tourist Privilege Booklet at the customer service counter on level one to enjoy exclusive offers. And if all that isn't enough to satisfy your shopping appetite, you could always head over to Westgate or J-Cube Malls, which are just a short walk away from IMM. IMM, Westgate and J-Cube are the ultimate mega mall experiences in Singapore. It's been a fantastic day of retail therapy and exercise. I've got all this to take home and I've saved more than I've paid. Better get a cab. Visit IMM, Singapore's largest outlet mall today, and experience shopping like never before. In a city of a thousand tastes, colors, and experiences, before you even get to, where do I start? First, you gotta work out how to get there. Well, you're lucky. Singapore is pretty efficient. But queuing up for a train ticket or getting the exact change for a bus or just traveling around a new place can be stressful. Grab the Singapore Tourist Pass from transit link counters in MRT stations or the Singapore Tourist Pass Plus from Changi Recommends counters at the airport. And for one, two or three days, you will be completely covered. Let's explore. On any bus or train in Singapore, all you need to do is tap the card. It's as easy as that. Hop off at Raffles Place MRT and soak in the iconic view that is Marina Bay. While you're here, a must visit is Gardens by the Bay. Check out the indoor rainforest and escape the Singapore heat for a few hours too. After a morning of sightseeing, a well-earned break is in order. A short bus ride away, Spa Ness does fantastic treatments. Time for lunch, and this city has it all, from local hawker food for a few bucks to fine dining that'll blow your mind. 
I've worked up an appetite after that massage, and this is one of my favorite spots. Straight from the ocean, pepper garlic crab, a wonderful bakute, which is a peppery pork broth, but the piece de resistance has to be the suckling pig, crispy skin marinated with hot bean paste. What's not to love? In the afternoon, why not explore some of Singapore's cultural heritage? Jump on the train to Chinatown and check out the Chinatown Heritage Center to see how people lived years ago. It's amazing that people used to live like this. It's such an eye-opener. Any trip to the Little Red Dot isn't complete without some shopping. For cool gifts and independent retailers, check out Haji Lane in the Arab Quarter. But for full-on retail therapy, Orchard is where it's at. While you're in Singapore, as long as you have the Singapore Tourist Pass, traveling is a breeze. Pick up the Singapore Tourist Pass at major transit link ticket offices and MRT stations or the Singapore Tourist Pass Plus at Changi Recommends counters at the airport. Welcome to Level 33, the world's highest urban microbrewery. Where all beers are brewed on site. Where brewing is in our DNA, which inspires our menu. And where people feel like home, even though they're away from home. Craftsmanship is for me the expression of the passion and creativity of a person that is not mass market and creates something really unique. We have obviously the microbrewery as the anchor and key element of craftsmanship that goes throughout the venue. Craftsmanship means that you need to do more things by yourself, so the human touch is central. Of course, you put your creativity and your ideas inside. You can manipulate to have a different output if you want to. Our beers are usually very traditional, but we have also unique seasonal beers like our Brut beer, which is brewed with the same yeast as Champagne Baron de Rothschild, which is our house champagne. So after eight very successful years here at Level 33, we wanted to address our customer needs by creating a more formal environment in the dining room and a social, more vibrant, cozy environment here in the social area and a beautiful raw and seafood oyster bar behind me with best view of the bay. I think first of all, Level 33 being the world's highest urban microbrewery, this is our uniqueness, this is our heart. So when we think about food, it's okay, what can we deliver here, taking advantage of the brewery? So we start to think of okay, the beer we can use, but also the byproduct, which is spent grain. We are now offering a content brewery cuisine where yeast meets west. So it's a modern food focus, but also brewery inspired cuisine. So I guess that's what really makes us unique because we are a restaurant in a brewery and we are making use of that as well. Cooking from Chef Archan, then we have Gabriel's beer and Martin's vision. I think somehow between we are the bridge connecting points of all these elements towards the guests, especially with the new cuisine that we have contemporary to transform somehow with food and beer, we always try to blend it together and showcase this to the guests. I recommend Level 33 to my family and friends because it's a unique experience from the food beverage offer. You have the obviously homemade beers. We have a beautiful wine selection with boutique wines from all over the world. And the dining options range from the formal dining for corporate lunches or dinners to here to the social area or on the terrace with beautiful drinks, finger food and everything paired with a unique, magnificent bay view. Just a short drive from the edge of the bustling city is Marina Bay Golf Course, Singapore's first and only link-style 18-hole public golf course. With a cinematic city skyline in the backdrop, it is one of Asia's finest golf courses. Guests can drop by the golf store to get their golfing accessories before their game or simply choose from the diverse array of golfing equipment available to add to their collection. Head over to the four-tier driving range and pick a spot at any of its 146 bays to practice some swings before heading down to the golf course. The short game could well be the most important aspect of the game. Besides the spacious practice greens, golfers can get their short game going by heading down to the uniquely designed putting course. With six carefully contoured greens of varying lengths, the course is challenging and fun for novice or serious golfers. 
Enjoy some bonding time on the putting course with the family too. Experience the award-winning Par 72 18-hole golf course. Spanning 6,493 meters, the course features undulating fairways, varying lengths of holes, and dramatic putt bunkers that brings hours of challenges and enjoyment for golfers. The Par 3 13th hole is the golf course's signature hole, with its island green design and surrounding water body. Marina Bay Golf also offers the only par 6 in Singapore, with a whooping distance of 651 meters away from the black tee. For those who want to take a break and cool down, the Canopy Cafe offers a picturesque sweeping view of the entire golf course with the city landscape setting. From local dishes to western dishes, one look at the menu will leave visitors spoilt for choice. The Canopy Cafe also has a dainty little extension just downstairs for guests craving for some tea or dessert and a quiet place to relax. With contemporary shower and locker facility, plus a cozy lounge for VIPs, golfers can expect warm hospitality at Marina Bay Golf Course. And when golfers are done playing on the course, they can pick up their well-groomed cars from the auto detailing workshop. For younger or beginner golfers, Star Golf Academy offers various programs with customized modules to cater to all skill levels. Marina Bay Golf Course is one of the few golf courses in Singapore open for night golfing. So don't let the fun stop when the sun sets. Marina Bay Golf Course offers everything a discerning golfer could ask for. My friends and I set out on a mission to have the most fun possible in one day. And thanks to Clark Key, mission accomplished. Meet my partners in crime. And me, your instigator for tonight's shenanigans. Our first stop is the super new classic style steakhouse, the Ranch Steakhouse by Aston's. So do we all love steak? Definitely. Right, on a scale of one to 10, how hungry are we? 10. 10. I am so 12 right now. Okay, so what steak are you gonna get? I'm just gonna get the biggest one. I ordered the dry aged beef. So this is dry aged, so the flavors here are going oh, to be nice. even more sensation. A big meal for some, just a light snack for us. We're gonna be doing this all day, it's great. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Wow. After all, today we are packing in as much fun as possible. Next stop, please. With over 160 outlets all over Japan, Kushikatsu Tanaka has opened their first international spot right here at Clark Key. So I hear there's a pretty cool game here that people like to play. Yes, it's called Chinchirori. How do you know this stuff? It's a drinking game. Yes. <laughs> we get even number, you get half price. Did you guys finish all the beef? <laughs> so sorry, Pai. What can I say? Perfect for sharing. This food is the best way to get friends and family together. With an extensive menu of over 50 Thai specialties, Talay Thai serves traditional Thai cuisine with a modern twist. Hey, 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 what do you mean your food? Sorry, you're sharing that. <laughs> so how do you say yummy? Like really yummy in Thai? Aroi. Aroi. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. But you walked into that. That's so hot. Uh, <laughs> great time. To the big G's. To the big G's. <laughs> Coming direct from Hong Kong, Singapore's first outlet takes the game of beer pong to a whole new level. Play with other players across the world via the app. Grab a bite from the great international menu and whatever you do, make sure you win. Looking for a pre-game spot to kick off your night? We can't think of anywhere better. With its meticulously crafted cocktails and yummy bar nibbles, Red Tail never disappoints. Oh, that's so strong. No! 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 Oh, no! Oh, yes! 
And now it's time to party. For an unforgettable way to finish off a great night out, there's no better place than Zouk. From its excellent curated selection of local and international DJs, world class sound systems, and state of the art lighting, Zouk is a household name renowned as one of the top clubs in the world. After all that partying, who wouldn't get hungry? Again! Fresh from Chengdu, China, Spice World is the new talk of the town when it comes to hot pot dining choices. Hey guys, do you remember、um, when Lady Gaga was wearing that meat dress at that ball? Yeah. Well, obviously, this is where she got it couture. In it goes. I'm not sharing this meat with Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> We tried the signature teddy bear mala soup, which is Instagram worthy and just what I need to sober up after all that fun. Clark Key is on a whole new level of awesomeness, be it day or night. Restaurants, bars, and clubs. If you're looking to have the most fun possible in one day, head to Clark Key.